The course is a combination of what I call science and creativity. Um, as recording engineers, as um, producers, we tend to have one foot in the science and one foot in the emotional or the creative world. And there's different ways that we can describe that, okay? Um, one way that we can describe that is science and creative. The other way is um, what I refer to a lot is as the objective, which is the quantifiable and the measurable. That's the science part of it, the technology part of it. And what I refer to as the subjective, which is the emotional side of it. And perspective, our perception of what it is that we are hearing. Um, and there are uh, quite a bit of phenomenon that occur that we as humans perceive differently than the actuality of it. That's the science called psychoacoustics. Um, there is the Haas effect associated with that, precedence effect, um, lower the first wave front, so on and so forth. Um, this is um, information that we will discuss in the course. Um, and once you understand that, it allows you to take the, those concepts and utilize them creatively. It broadens the palette, okay? Um, and what we really want to try to understand here more than anything is the human response um, and how humans respond to what they're hearing and how can we take advantage of that. And that's where the psychoacoustics comes in. Um, but we also need to be able to understand our technology fluently so that we can um, not just use the equipment in a parochial manner, but actually take it and make it do what we want. Okay, And this is where we go beyond presets. This is where we go beyond basic um, videos that show us how to use something with a specific example. That's great. Um, and it works when you're dealing with that specific example. Um, the sort of downside to that is that you need to be able to take the concept of what it is you're doing and apply it to multiple situations. Some of the technology is a little bit easier, like EQ, for example, which is tonal based processing. Um, you know, 1K one kilohertz, that frequency, will add an edge to just about any sound. So there are commonalities that occur within um, that realm. On the other side of that, which is the flip side of sound, which is where we have dynamics, where we have the audio envelope, um, where we have what we refer to as ADSR, which has to do with um, volume changes, loudness changes of the signal from beginning to end. And even with speech, for example, with vocals, um, different words um, have different shapes associated with them. In other words, the word that is much harder sounding um, and more, um, the impression is that it's a bit louder than the word say. Um, and, we need to understand the differences between them so that we can effectively process that. So one in our recordings sounds as loud as the other and gives the same impact as the other. Okay, and there's a variety of ways of doing that. Um, we can get into multiple instances of our plugins and our equipment, so on and so forth. The issue is that is that sometimes that gets a bit cumbersome. Um, but if we understand the science of it, um, we take audio envelope and we break it down into what's known as the ADSR, the attack, decay, sustain, and release components of that sound. We begin to get inside the sound. Same thing with tonality. When we deal with harmonics, when we deal with frequency content, and when we deal with these relationships. Um, Again, if we understand the theory and the science behind that, we can more effectively utilize our equipment and realize what's up here and make that come out of the speakers and touch people, which is the goal of what we're doing here. So what I devise is a little bit of an example for you guys to give you an idea of how somewhat thinking outside the box and understanding um, these different um, 
scientific components of what we do, how we can make that benefit for you. Now, I'm going to pull up a Pro Tools session. And on screen, what we have is our Pro Tools session. It's a very simple session. Um, you can see the faders here. OK, um, you can see that I have some processing up on top here, some effects over to the right. And I've got two of my processors showing. OK, one is a compressor that deals with the dynamics. And the other one is an equalizer, a one band equalizer that I'm using as a high pass filter. OK, I'm going to play the track for you guys and let you hear what this sounds like kind of raw, so to speak, without any processing or anything like that. So let's do that right now. Somebody by my side Because the storm is closing in And I could be buried like A step to lead me back to where I was When the deaths were even And two worlds were As it's going down They never see Of the danger of the stranger That's a very organic recording. Um, it's not the best recording on the planet. Okay. Um, and one of the things we'll focus on in the course is critical listening, listening to something like this and ad identifying what are the issues um, and what possibly needs to be fixed here. Now, with any recording, there will be absolute issues, noise, distortion, things of that nature. And then, of course, there are the creative decisions. Um, and these two intermingle, they intertwine with one another all the time. And again, if we understand the theory behind what it is we are, listening to and what we're dealing with here. In other words, the tonality of the sound and the dynamic of the sound, which is really the essence of everything. We can begin to under, understand these issues um, as we're working with it. So let me do something right now. Um, let me move this around here. Uh, I'm going to bring all my filters in here. And you can see there's filters on every track. And I'm going to play the song for you again. And listen to the change that you hear in the clarity um, and just the overall impression of the song. I won't play all uh, too much of it. And I'll remove the filters. Because the storm is closing in, and I could be buried like a step to lead. Put them back, back in. Where I was when the deaths were even and two were. And you can hear there's a change in clarity. You can hear there's a change in the overall vibe. It's the change in clarity that changes the vibe. Without the processors, it's kind of leaden and heavy and kind of murky sounding. Um, what we're doing is um, what many people talk about, which is subtractive EQ, um, which is, in my opinion, not the be all end all, but it's very useful in the cleanup stages of processing your tracks for your mix. We'll get to that, and that's something we will discuss in the class here. Um, if we Listen to the song. It's, a, it's kind of a hopeful song, and we want it to be a little bit bright and bouncy, and that's what I've done with the processing here. Now, if we focus on his vocals, here's pretty much what I would like to focus on here, and I'm going to highlight this part of the vocal, and I set it up so that I can loop this part of the vocal. So let's hear what he sounds like by his lonesome. 
I need someone, somebody by my side Because the storm is closing in And I could be buried alive A step to lead me back to where I was When the debts were even And to was one now we can hear that there's a couple of issues here. One is the dynamic issue where some words are um, more present than others. Some are even louder than others. We can hear that. And the other one is that kind of um, sort of nasal effect that he has on his voice. Um, this is something that occurs many times when you're recording in a small space. They're known as the early reflections. Um, and if they're strong enough, they end up giving a nasal quality because most of these reflections are more pronounced in the mid-range. Um, if they're really loud, they sometimes will tend to result in the sort of megaphone effect that you're hearing there. Um, we can use an equalizer if we want um, to deal with this. Let me clear this up and here's my equalizer. Let's try that first. I'm going to put it in and I've preset it because I want this to be short here. I need someone, somebody by my side. And what I've done is this. Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried like And here's what I'm working with. To lead me back to where I was when the debts were even and to was war. Now that's not bad. And that helps with the most obvious but if we listen carefully we can still hear components of that sort of nasal effect there okay and what you'll find is when we delve into the sound um, on the tonal side of it that there's what's known as harmonics and these harmonics are what contribute to tonality um, and there's a certain order to them um, that determines what it overall sounds like and there's a very cool sort of what I call back pocket effect that we can utilize um, that in certain cases works much, much better than a simple equalizer. And if we understand the theory behind what it is that makes up a sound, and you have these frequency components, you have time, you have energy, and frequency relationships that all impact one another. If we work with the time effect, so I'm going to bypass my EQ here, and I'm going to bring up my delay effect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something that's called a comb filter. And we can fine tune this um, using mathematics to calculate exactly where to set the delay time so that we can get the desired effect. And what I've done in, for the first part of the demonstration is since I've inserted this in the inline position. In other words, the sound has to go through it. I'm using the mix control on the plugin. In this example, this is the way we would use this. And I've set it up, it's 49%, 50-50. So the effect is just as loud as the original sound. And what you'll hear is something that sounds like this. I need someone, somebody by my side. Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried like a step. Now, of course, not much of an improvement. It sounds pretty ugly. Um, but what we're doing here is we are altering the harmonic content and relationships since it's a 50 50 ratio. Um, the effect is very severe, but listen to what happens when I take it and I change the ratio and I make it more dry than effect. I need someone, somebody by my side Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried like Now notice how much smoother overall the voice is because what we're affecting here is not only the offending frequency or frequencies, but also their harmonics, which are a very strong component of what makes up the tonality. Let's bypass this. I need someone, somebody by my You can hear that mid-range bump. Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried. When I put it in, there's a smoothness that comes over it. Me back to where I was when the debts were even and two was one. Now, 
one thing you'll notice is that the level drops because what we are doing is we are removing energy content here. And that's why overall the level drops a little bit. And we just got to bring the fader up a touch. That's all. But let's see how this works within the mix. So here's the vocal without our effect. I need someone, somebody by my side. Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried like. And that's cool. Not too bad. But he seems to, subjectively speaking to me, sitting on top of the mix. I'm going to raise his level a little bit and I'm going to put my effect in. I need someone, somebody by my side. Because the storm is closing in and I could be buried like. Step to lead me back to where I was. Notice now that that excessive mid-range and sort of nasal quality there is not competing so much with the guitars and we can hear the guitars more clearly now we can even hear some of the drum hits more clearly and the resonances on the drums a little bit more clearly and the vocal seems to settle into the mix um, a little more nicely now we need to remember is we're not dealing with right or wrong here what we are dealing with is what exactly do we wish to present to the listener okay what do we want to give this artist how do we want to present this artist and it's important that we understand that because there's really no right or wrong we might like it this way i need someone somebody by my side because the storm is closing in or we might like it this way step to lead me back to where i was so we have that of course, now we're fixing the tonality issue, but we've also got that dynamics issue that we need to deal with. So this is where the compressor limiter comes in. Um, let's put this in and see what this sound now sounds like. I need someone, somebody by my side Because the storm is closing in And I could be buried like A step to lead me back to where I was and you'll notice now that we have the tonality without the nasal, and we now have the levels of the individual words sitting more consistently. And we now have a vocal that sits squarely in the middle of this mix, and it nestles itself a little bit better. Again, no right or wrong here. It depends on what you wish to present to the listener. So there's a pretty good demonstration of thinking outside the box. We're using delay to actually equalize this vocal track. And this effect, this trick, works on any instrument. Um, give you a real quick example on the kick drum. Um, if I take this and I do uh, my delay plug-in on the kick drum, and let's come down, we'll just use the mod delay, it's fine. Um, we'll set this up so we've got our 50-50 ratio, and I'm gonna go down to, um, on here, a 1.8 millisecond delay and let's hear what this sounds like on the kick drum when i add it of course we get that hollowness because the ratio that we have going here but if i change this now here's without with and what we're doing here is we're just changing the relationship of the frequencies. We're removing some, we're emphasizing others. Um, we're changing how they relate to one another. Um, and we're altering the essence of that drum. So if we put this back into the mix. I need someone, somebody by my side Because the storm is closing in And I could be buried like A step to lead me back to where I so overall, we have a different vibe there. What we're doing is we're laying that kick drum now, the essence of it, below that of the bass. So a little bit of a demonstration of what can be done um, when we have a very good grasp on the science, um, the theory of what we're dealing with when we work with sound in a creative manner, and how we can more effectively utilize our tools and use them in something of a more creative manner rather than um, going to a preset um, or 
you know, something that someone showed us. We want to be able to think for ourselves and we want to be able to be creative for ourselves. And this is what makes great mixes. So hopefully um, this is something that um, interests you and and watching this, it uh, piques your interest in learning more about um, the overall science and creativity combination that fuels what we do. Um, and if you look over the course, you'll see that it's pretty well balanced and there's some very cool stuff that we can go through there. So hopefully um, we'll see you guys in a class and you'll take the course and I'll be more than happy to share with you not only the theory and the science of it, but also the technology, which is fascinating also, and any little secrets or tricks that exist, although they're not really secrets once you understand how the the science impacts the creativity. So thanks for watching um, and hope to see you in class. Take care and enjoy.